Hello, fellow Earth signs, to your timeless oracle energy reading. Why do I say fellow Earth signs? Well, I have a lot of Virgo placements, Virgo Sun, Virgo Rising, Venus, and Mercury. So, I like, um, that's why I said <laughs> fellow Earth signs. So, uh, this reading, no matter when you are viewing this, it will be resonating with you for the next seven to ten days. So, without any further delay, here's your reading for Virgos, Taurus, and Capricorns. And if you're new to the channel, this is the Spectrum of Lighthouse. How are you? I am Brett. We'll be using four different Oracle decks, as opposed to a traditional tarot reader using the Rider Waite or a variety of the Rider Waite tarot. I more so do oracle readings. Uh, I do say tarot because it says frequency tarot, uh, but I do have a playlist where I explain all the card decks that I use. So you can definitely check those out after this. But let's see what frequency are the earth signs currently a match to? Alright. <clears throat> and with this card, uh, if it's in reverse or full, or if, if it's in reverse, it does have a different meaning than if it's upright. So I will be counting uh, if it's in reverse or if it pops out. And if you find that this reading resonates with you and you want to check out some other readings have a bunch of different playlists or you can just check out the channel or if you start to watch this and it doesn't resonate with you you can always come back and check this out and look at some other ones okay so, Spirit, what is, or what frequency are the Earth signs currently a match to? What would they kind of do? Come on, which one wants to pop out? <laughs> That's a lot of them. Alright, Spirit. What frequency are the Earth signs currently a match to? Here we go. And I'll, I'll flip them over and then I'll go back and read them because, again, unlike the tarot, ooh, <clears throat> 22 in reverse, self trust. Here it is upright. 22 is a master number. Reverse, we'll see what it means. It doesn't necessarily mean it's good or bad. It could mean you have no trust in yourself. It could mean you're trusting others too much. We'll check it out. All right. This next deck, the Starseed Oracle, is going to be what baby step are the earth signs being called to make? It's about self-trust in reverse. So, what baby step are the earth signs, Virgo, Taurus, and Capricorn, being called to make? And with this deck, this is really uh, the frequency tarot deck. It's really the only deck that has a different meaning, upright or reverse. Spirit. What baby step are the earth signs being called to make? We'll do that one. <clears throat> so sorry about that.
And now, like I said, upside down doesn't really change its meaning. All paths lead home. It's a baby step you're being called to make. This next deck is the Keepers of the Light. And with this question, we're going to see which Keeper of the Light that you Earth signs are being called or asked to call upon. Sorry, that one, you guys, I hope you guys saw it. Keys deck. Higher learning, yet learned from experience. More inner study is now required to further progress. All paths lead home, said, inner authority, intuition, turn your gaze within, self-trust, let's go with the theme, let's go, and then the cosmic reading cards, and with the cosmic reading cards, This is going to be what your soul, all right? So when I said it, what your soul is wanting to tell you. What message does the earth sign soul have to say? Unconditional love. Beautiful. Turned right to self-trust. If you have drawn this card in reverse, you are consumed with uncertainty. You are giving in to the idea that you do not know what is best for you. Part of you is worried that other people who, quote, know more than you do, uh, to hear the moan in the back. Interesting timing wise. Just gonna let it go. This could be a symbol of something, whether it's don't let distractions get in the way, right? Don't be distracted because you do know what's best for you. Part of you is worried that other people who quote know more than you do know what is best for you. Because of this, you often choose what you think you are supposed to choose. I say it like that because it's italicized. You are allowing yourself to be who you are told that you are. The result is that you have lost trust in yourself. So I think I said something about that. The cost of shaping yourself to fit the desires, preferences, and expectations of others is losing yourself. And... When you lose yourself, you become frozen without direction, unable to make your own choices. It's time to stop listening to others and to find yourself again. Dang. That's pretty cool. Considering, <coughs> excuse me, considering what all these are on the surface saying. And it's funny, because I guess you guys are thinking this too, but, um, Lose yourself in the music, the moment you own it, right? Never let it go, oh. So that's interesting. Huh. So, inner authority, more inner study, Because you've lost trust in yourself. Oops, just kicked the microphone. Because you lost trust in yourself. All paths lead home. Let's see what this one says, because I'm pretty sure that one's just perfectly, per perfectly said. And when we get all these cards, then we'll, we'll talk about it a little more. 
It's normal to look to the external world for answers and guidance. All right, so the theme is to quit looking outside of yourself for guidance and for the trust and for the confirmation and know that it's all inside and that this is all. So for example, this little reading, okay, could be confirmation of the external that what you're feeling on the inside is correct. Which is, you need to trust yourself more because you are correct. Since we're talking about earth signs, um, this could be any placement, okay? Because I'm going to say that my moon is in Cancer, which is just very in intuitive and, and everything. So, no matter what your moon sign, but if you're an earth sign, we're very stubborn, of course. It's almost, you know, about not being as stubborn and trusting yourself and working on your intuition. What's revolutionary is turning your gaze inward. You're being called to source your guidance from within to study the terrain of your inner landscape, to develop a reliable relationship with your soul. The more time you spend connecting with your soul, the deeper the connection will become. The challenge for empaths is staying connected without cutting off from the world. And that's a kind of us too, Earth signs, I know. Oh, all this noise around. I live in the suburbs, so if you're hearing all these ends of the stuff, you know, we're very stubborn. You get distracted easily. But, um, you know, say, give me some time. Breathe in and out. The best way to do this is to develop a daily practice that helps you to keep checking in, to draw in the wisdom within and let that be the authority in your life. The yeah, so the challenge for empaths is staying connected without cutting off from the world. The best way to do this is to develop a daily practice that helps you to keep checking in, to draw in the wisdom within, and let that be the authority in your life. If this card appears, you may be called to develop or switch up your spiritual practice, to get in the habit of turning your gaze within, Maybe do your own readings to yourself instead of always looking at, at um, these other readings, right? Because this is more oracle as opposed to tarot, so maybe these are still the vibration of the readings that you've been watching or have been coming up for you. And they've all basically been saying the same thing, which is go within to get the guidance and the intelligence that you need. So one way could be if you do like these card readings, do the card readings yourself. Learn how to do them yourself. And it doesn't just have to be the Rider Waite tarot deck, you know. It, it can be like this, these oracle decks and everything, whatever gravitates towards you. Because this is going to be, in essence, also your voice. How you can interpret energy. Because we all interpret energy different. Alright, let me repeat that. If this card appears, you may be called to develop or switch up your spiritual practice. To get in the habit of turning your gaze within, getting centered for the day before, uh, parentheses, getting centered for the day before consuming anything from the outside world. To start from a feeling of at homeness and throughout each day to find simple ways to keep coming, quote, home. I have this project, I have this band called Station Juniper, and we have a song that's called lead you home. I'm just saying that because it says all paths lead home. So I'm just going to say all paths lead you home. Yeah, throughout the day to find a simple way to keep you coming home. This doesn't mean switching off from the realities of today's world. We need as many conscious people as possible living with their eyes wide open. Rather, it's a call to start your day from a place of connectedness, grace, and devotion. So when you go out into the world and when you let the world in, you do it from an unshakable state of being, a state where you draw your strength, authority, and guidance <clears throat> from a place deep, deep within. Starseed Soul Inquiries, question you can 
uh, write down and ask yourself, how are you being called to turn your gaze within? <clears throat> Let's go. Let's take a drink of water for me or for you. And now I'm, I'm definitely all about self-development, self-empowerment and everything and um, taking your power back. So when we talk about connecting to like Melchizedek or a keeper of the light, <clears throat> at Melchizedek, higher learning is an aspect of yourself. It's an aspect of us all. And for you, Earth sign specifically, it's Melchizedek that you need to tap into. So whether that is just Googling or YouTubing Melchizedek meditation, Archangel Melchizedek, whatever, if it's um, looking Melchizedek up a little bit, seeing who he, gender's blue and everything, it's more masculine type energy. And see, you know, during, even just writing the name Melchizedek down and, and looking at it or having that be a mantra of yours during a transcendental meditation or something. Because it says, Melchizedek is a high priest who is mentioned in the Bible's book of Genesis and many other sources too. Now, I don't mean the keepers of the light. If you watch that video, I go into it a little bit more, I'm pretty sure. But it, it, it's all different types of religions. There's Hindu gods, there's Celtic or Celtic, um, Odin, you know, and all those types. Freya, Amethyst, who's on the box. Uh, <clears throat> and there's a lot of other different sort of beings. So... If religion or the Bible or anything like that triggers you, just take a deep breath in and out because we're talking about something that transcends all of that. But this is just a little information about these beings of light. All right. And many other sources too. He is here to assist the earth through the ascension process, which is basically moving everyone and everything back to a state of love and harmony. He appears with bright light around him and a long white beard to match his ancient high priest ways and is said to have his own order of light-filled priests who are able <clears throat> to help spiritual people develop their gifts and qualities. As he works on a high energetic level, he can connect, we, sorry, we can connect with him through sacred geometry and by focusing on ancient star-shaped symbols. Word, flower of life is there. Sorry about the breathing and stuff like that, but I mean, it's this one on his chest too. An extended message from Melchizedek is that you have learned so much to this point and are learning more every day. You are recognizing all the great lessons your experiences and challenges have brought to you and are preparing for a transition or inner ascension where you will move beyond another level of fear and into the inner sanctum of your heart and soul. Become aware of patterns, ancient symbols, and signs being sent to you from the universe. So... I know I was saying stuff around here about stop looking on the outside, but that that is what I, I more or less, where I'm at is like people's advice of what you should do, like this card is saying that, that people know better than you. When really it's like universe should, I feel this way, show me a sign to confirm, right? If you're asking the universe to confirm feelings or to let you know a thing or to show you signs like that and you can interpret those signs, 
That is inner guidance that I'm talking about. But if you're only just like, obviously I have no issue with this, but some people are just get addicted to just paying people and readers and, and energy workers and just don't go anywhere. You know, and other people watch free YouTube videos and blast off into the ether. So, there is a sense that you are now able to focus in a new way and offer, and offer greater light to the world. Melchizedek and his order are now, are with you now leading you towards spiritual wisdom. Meditate and connect with their light. And I'd say their light is unconditional love. Heart chakra. Beautiful. Give yourself that unconditional love. Colors are pretty similar, kind of. You can kind of see that. 34 is a 7, makes it 22, that doesn't really go down. <clears throat> the ultimate lesson all of us have to learn is unconditional love, which includes not only others, but ourselves as well. It's Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. I'm not sure who she is, but that's a good quote. You have a choice between two doors, unconditional love and conditional love. Unconditional love is to love without judgment, conditions, expectations, and demands. It is love that stems from the heart space and is comprised completely of pure love, forgiveness, and compassion. Conditional love is to love with conditions, expectations, attachments, fear, and judgments. Love is given and received freely as long as the conditions of the love contract are being met. When others fail to meet the requirements of the love contract, love is lost and replaced with issues of fear, distrust, and doubts. To have unconditional love is to love is to first love yourself entirely. When you can completely love yourself with all your imperfections, you will have greater love and compassion towards others. If you are in a space where your love is conditional, ask yourself, from where does this condition stem? Because most often, you will find limiting thoughts and beliefs lingering in your subconscious. Deeper still, you may uncover the wounded child within you. It is to this child that love, understanding, and compassion must be shared. Now that you see the inner wounds within you with the gentleness of love, you are better able to see the wounded child within others. You will clearly see the part in them that is in most need of love. This does not mean that you must stay in a situation that does not serve your highest good. Sometimes loving unconditionally means having to walk away. I've been on both ends of that one. An affirmation that your soul, right? This is the message that your soul is telling you. I love all facets of myself and send any hurt or wounds within me, love and compassion, sacral and heart. So to go over this real fast, I mean, not just real fast, but you're losing trust in yourself because you think there are people out there that quote, know better than you or know more than you. And though there might be some book stuff that people know, everyone has different experiences and everyone has been through different things. There really isn't a greater than, better than, everything like that. And especially with 22, the master builder number and the master number, it's a good number to start with. It just means trust yourself more and a lot of us can get stuck in our heads right because a baby step to take is changing up your spiritual practice maybe starting to meditate 
Maybe start journaling, right? Maybe make a list of things you need to do. Read some sort of spiritual text, audiobook, whatever, but your baby step is to do some sort of spiritual practice. Learn something, right? Because higher learning Melchizedek. So when you change up your spiritual practice, maybe call upon Melchizedek to help you, to see what you like need to work on. Not necessarily work on, work through, but know to work through it with unconditional love. Because that's what your soul's message to you is. First, it's telling you that it loves you unconditionally, your soul, no matter what. And secondly, it's saying to give yourself, especially that inner child, that inner girl, that inner boy. That love, that unconditional love. If you need any help in further guidance or accepting yourself or moving forward or anything, for sure. I have all my contact info and you can talk to me. I don't know if you can hear the dogs barking or not. Um, from the neighborhoods, it's all good. Birds chirping, I think. If you can't hear them, cool. If not, it doesn't matter. I just want to end by saying trust, trust yourself, love. Trust yourself because all paths will lead you home. If you need help, call upon Melchizedek to help you. It's like a labyrinth. Call on Melchizedek to help you. To learn how to love yourself even. Because knowing yourself is the first step in loving yourself because once you know yourself and you know what that child's been through, you can unconditionally love it because you understand it. You understand it. You're knowing who you are. And that could be by learning your, your birth chart. That could be, you know, in many different ways, learning your numerology, doing gene keys, human design. There's a spectrum of different outlets and ways to do things out there. And as the mower starts again to cut the grass, I will end by saying that is what we offer here at the Spectrum of Lighthouse, is a spectrum of modalities and ways to know yourself. I love you.